Mike Radich here, and I'm now joining the phone by MMA veteran Falonico Vitali. Nico, how are you? Yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Nico, you got a fight coming up at King of the Cage Ali's. How's training been going for the fight? Uh, actually, I just got down on camp yesterday. Um, that's a lot. Um, was awesome. Uh, again, got me me ready for this uh, Friday Saturday. Pretty beaten up right now, so I'm going to take a couple days off, get some healing, and then uh, I'll be ready to go on Saturday. Your opponent, Elmer Waterhen, how much do you know about him? Actually, I don't know too much about the guy. Um, I, I saw some old uh, footage of him. Actually, I don't even know anything about him, so I'm actually going to live right right now. Now, he's the King of the Cage Canadian champion. Is this a title fight, even though it's not in Canada? Yeah. And your contract situation with King of the Cage, is, is this a multi-fight deal with them? Um, actually, uh, not really just a one-fight deal. Um, this is a fight that, uh, that, um, I was offered, so, uh, no, no multiple deals or anything, just, just one fight. Is it just because the fight's gonna be in Hawaii and you're from Hawaii, basically? You know what, I, I fought in King of Kings earlier in my career, and, uh, King of Kings is here in Hawaii, so that's why I'm doing it. You know, I just trying to get back into it again. Nico, it's been a while since we've seen you fight. Over a year since you fought Hector Lombard. What have you been up to? Um, actually, I've just been spending time with family and working. Um, taking it easy, cutting away my options. Uh, I didn't know I was going to fight again. Uh, I was off of this fight a few, few months ago. I've been training throughout the year. Um, got out of shape a little bit, but then, uh, there's one way to get back in shape is uh, get a fight off and then get ready for one and then <laughs> ready, to, ready to get back into the, the game again. Were you having thoughts about retiring? Hey, at first, uh, after I hit the, the Lombard fight, you know, I, I, I want to... Uh, it was, it was, it was, uh, was one I'm on the mind, so, you know, I thought about retiring, but, uh, you know... Just watching the guys here train and get ready for their fights, you know. Uh, these guys inspire me to just get back into it again. Were you getting a lot of offers from other places to fight, or was King of the Cage really the you know the best offer that you were getting, or the only offer you were getting? Well, I was getting offers to fight in different different organizations. I just never, uh, I just didn't take it, you know. Um, but uh, me being a fighter, you know. Uh, being a competitor, you know, even a one-year layoff was pretty good for me, so uh, I just want to get back into it and see where I go from here. You're the X1 middleweight champion. Are they still running shows? Are they still in business? Yeah, they're still in business, but um, in Hawaii, MMA is pretty tough, you know. Um, the crowd is the not the same like before when Super Bowl and uh, Icon was here. But, um, You've been fighting in this sport for a really long time. What keeps you motivated and what keeps you, you know, hungry to continue to fight? You know what? Just, uh, being able to, able to teach the young guys and train with them, um, staying healthy, and just watching the, the new guys come up, they, they're the one that motivates me. And that's why, you know, here in Hawaii, you know, I, I try to do anything for the sport of MMA. I mean, it's been for a while, you know, the, the turnout hasn't been great. So, um, I, I'm trying to do anything we can do to, to get the sport back to being going again. Are you a full time MMA fighter or do you have a, a different a day job? It's, you know, something not continuing with the sport? Uh, MMA, MMA fighting is part time for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have a full time job. I've been working full time for the past twelve years. So I'm fighting at the same time, so uh, you know I, I usually take off here and there, uh, to get ready when it gets close to a fight, but other than that I I, I do this part time. 
you touched on it a little bit, the MMA scene in Hawaii. Is it different because, you know, there's there's not a lot of, you know, big fights because, you know, back in those those Super Bowl days and the Icon Sport days, you know, they were bringing guys like uh, like a Robbie Lawler, a Mayhem Miller, all these other, you know, guys that are not from Hawaii, they were bringing them in. Is it the fan base, like, they're, they're, they're not that excited about it or is it, you know, just the, the talent is different? What, what, why isn't the scene the same it's always been? I think it's, um, I think the, the sport of MMA here in Hawaii is so saturated. Um, we, we got small events almost every two weeks, you know. Um, we got the UFC on television every single week. So people see this sport all the time. So I think it takes the interest away from the people uh, to come and uh, watch the fights here in Hawaii, especially at the, at the place there or anything. Uh, that's pretty much what it is. It's just a... Uh, Maybe earlier in your career, maybe not now, because you fought a lot of fights at the Blaisdell Arena where this fight is going to be taking place, but is there a little bit of pressure, you know, being the guy that's going to basically carry the show to, you know, maybe get some ticket sales up? Because you've been fighting in Hawaii a long time, you know, is there a little bit of pressure, you know, to, to carry the show a little? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I, I've been, I, I've been, I've been fighting almost twelve years. This is my like, what twentieth fight, so the pressure is 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 really good. You know, it's not the same. I mean, I'm I'm over the pressure part of fighting. I'm just I just go get to have fun, you know. That's basically how I motivate myself. Just going to have fun, no pressure at all. Obviously, it's it's closer to you because you live in Hawaii. But is it different preparation going from a fight that you know maybe would be on the mainland or you know in a, in a different country or uh, fighting at home? Like, what's the difference mainly for you well, fighting at home? Well, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a lot laid back, you know the the. the Commission here is not as 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 as, as strict as 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 as, as, as you fight in in uh, in Nevada. So uh, people here are laid back. You know, everybody's like they, they like to cruise and and it's not as not as bad as um, fighting in a big organization like Strike Force or anything. But uh, yeah, people here are really laid back. I know it's been a really long time since you've been in the UFC, close to nine years, but you had two fights in the UFC, both against Matt Linlin, and then after you were done with the UFC, you went on a nice five or six fight winning streak. Why were you never called back to go there? Um, I'm, I'm not sure what, what happened. Um, I, th- I think it's more of... Uh, um, the sport here in Hawaii was getting a lot bigger. It was getting big at the time. Super Bowl was pretty much growing. And the pay was pretty good, too, as well. <laughs> That's probably one of the reasons why I was still fighting here in Hawaii. Right. Um, I, you know, I, I, I have no idea what happened. Um, maybe my fight with Matt didn't, didn't come out as he wanted it to be. Uh, the, the one thing that Dana wanted me to do was beat Matt Lennon, and at the same time, I uh, Now, you're no longer with Bellator, correct? That was just a one-fight deal with them, to, uh, like a super fight with Hector Lombard, the non-title thing? Right. Now, were they saying, hey, if you know you come in and beat him, you'll get a contract? Was that basically what they had in plan for you, or was it just, you know, we're just going to put you in here, regardless of what happens, we're not really going to offer you anything else? Well, I, I was supposed to go back and fight, but I was pretty much injured throughout the year. So I, I didn't... If you win this fight, if you're healthy after this fight, are you planning on, you know, being very active the remainder of the year or is it just gonna be, you know, the right situation has to come up? Well, you know, I'm I, I opened up a new gym so um 
I'm thinking about quitting my job and, and probably getting back into the fight game as well. So training will probably be more serious <laughs> after this fight. Right. Fal Nico, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you would like to thank and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Uh, I'd just like to thank the people who support me, uh, Powerhouse Gym, uh, you know, Top Team, all the guys at the team you know, getting me ready for this fight. And all the people that support me there in Hawaii and also my sponsors. Thank you so much. Nico, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Good luck at King of the Cage Ali's against Elmer Waterhen.